What's up, everybody? Charlie Marlowe here. Let's talk a little baseball. The Steamers projections for war on fan graphs. I think this is pretty interesting. I saw it in the MLB.com article, and it basically has for all 30 teams in Major League Baseball, who on each team is projected to have the highest wins above replacement. They break it down by division with your St. Louis Cardinals. No huge surprise that the player they project with the best war is Nolan Arenado, of course, Cardinals third baseman. Let's go through the rest of the division here quickly. Brewers, William Contreras, all right, the catcher with a 4.4 war projection. That is pretty dang good. He is supposed to lead the Brewers in that category. I mentioned already Nolan Arenado for your St. Louis Cardinals. How about for the Cubs? A tie for the Cubs with second baseman. Nico Horner, and also starting pitcher Justin Steele, both projected with a 3.3 war for the Northsiders, for the Pirates. The tall, skinny, young, talented shortstop O'Neill Cruz projected to have a 3.0 war for the Buccos. And then for the Reds, you got middle infielder, shortstop second baseman, Matt McClain, projected with a 3.3 war, a guy who has a lot of power and also speed, can hit some bombs, can steal some bases, can do a little bit of everything. So what do you guys think about that? With the Cardinals, you got to think, okay, Arenado projection. Could Goldie beat that? Sure. Could you have a young guy really step up? Somebody like a Jordan Walker, somebody like a Nolan Gorman, if he stays healthy, would it be that crazy if, if Brendan Donovan was healthy all season long, that he could be the Cardinals war leader? Could there be a starting pitcher who just, who just goes off? Eh. So Arenado is the safe play. And I get that. I think Goldie will have a bounce back year, but again, some of those young guys, what, what if Lars Newtbar even, even went off, you know, 3.4, which is the projection for, for Nolan Arenado, is not that high compared to some other players in the league. So there's a very good chance that some of these other Cardinals I mentioned could surpass that. And hell, Nolan Arenado could as well. Trivia question, who do you think steamers, fan graphs, projections? So in baseball, I'll give you two guys. Who do you think has the highest projected war of any player? I'll let you formulate your answer, and I'll tell you. The top projection, remember that Shohei Otani is not going to be pitching this year. So the top player projected Ronald Acuna Jr. of the Atlanta Braves with a projected war of 7.4. You want to see who's second? Second projection just got traded to the New York Yankees, Juan Soto, with a projection of 6.7. Those are the only two I wrote down. I think I saw Mookie Betts. Don't quote me on this one. I think Mookie Betts was the only other player above six with a 6.1 Mookie Betts of the Dodgers. And again, you got to think if Shohei Otani is healthy in terms of pitching, he would surpass that. So hopefully if he's healthy and ready to rock and roll, Shohei Otani goes off again in, uh, in 2025. What do you guys think? If, if you had to, to guess, and, and war is, is a total stat encompassing, obviously, Offense, defense, not special teams, Jeff Fisher, but base running and all that. So who do you think is going to be the Cardinals' best player in 2024? I can see it being somebody like Brendan Donovan if he's healthy. Arenado, Goldie are the, are the easy picks. I do expect a bounce back season from Goldie. I mean, even Arenado as well. Wilson Contreras? Could Wilson Contreras, you saw his brother William, who's projected to lead the way for the Brewers. Could Wilson Contreras have an amazing year, clean it up a little bit defensively and have a fantastic offensive year and, and kind of uh, creep up there? What do you think? Well, by the way, now that I'm doing this, let's go back and look. And this is baseball reference war, which is obviously different than fan graphs and all that. But Wilson Contreras last year had a 3.4 war. So there you go. That's higher than the projected coming up this year, of, uh, of Nolan Arenado. Let's just go through real quick. So last year, 
Nolan Arenado. 2.4 war for the Cardinals. Down year for Mr. Arenado. Goldie, 3.4 war. So right there with Wilson Contreras. Who else we got? How about Nolan Gorman? Nolan Gorman, 2.4 war. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'm trying to think who else had a good year last year. Obviously, Brendan Donovan was hurt. Let's see what he did. Brendan Donovan, look at this. 1.9 war, and the dude only played freaking 95 games. He played basically two-thirds of the season. So if you kind of extrapolate that out, if he's healthy, he's probably pushing three war. So he has a chance to improve on that this year. Jordan Walker, defensive liabilities. So his war, I think it was almost evenish. Yeah, negative 0.1 war for Jordan Walker last year, despite an OPS plus of 114. But the defensive, the defensive metrics were not good at all. Just while I'm doing this. Like I said, on this show, I like to sometimes do my research on the fly. Lars Newpark. That surprised me a little bit. 3.3 war for Lars Newpark in 117 games. So basically, he misses 40 or so. He played about three-fourths of the season. He misses a quarter of the season. Again, kind of uh, assume health. Man, he's pushing like 4.5 war. So there you go. Very good chance. Very good chance that Lars Newpark could be the guy in 2024 that leads the team. I think you have, if I have a bucket, a bucket of guys. And let's look at, let's give the pitchers a little bit of love. Now, obviously, Jordan Montgomery left. But Jordan Montgomery's war was 4.1 last year for the Cardinals and the Rangers. This is obviously regular season. Let's see what Sonny Gray's war was last year with the Twins. Sonny Gray, 5.3. So there you go. Good chance Sonny Gray could be your war leader for the Cardinals. A lot of, lot of, lot of options. I think when you when you read off those names, it's pretty obvious though. Cardinals, they have a lot of pretty dang good players, especially position players. Another starting pitcher, could you see pushing Sonny Gray for war? Leader, probably not. I think you'll have solid guys, Michaelis and Lance Lynn and uh, Kyle Gibson. We'll see if Steven Matz is healthy. But man, I, I really do like the Cardinals just overall bucket of position players. There's a lot of really talented players. Let's look up Edmund real quick because I can't remember. And this is all, remember guys, wins above replacement. He was 2.1 last year. Did not have a uh, very, very good season offensively. His OPS plus was 91. What do you guys think? Comment, like, subscribe. Instead of just talking war, I can ask it like this. Who do you think is going to be the Cardinals' best overall player? Who do you think is going to be the MVP for the Cardinals in 2024? Throw it in the comments who you think. Also, thank you. Comment, like, subscribe. Share the show. Share these videos if you like it. Share the channel on your social media in your group text for Cardinals and all that. This show brought to you, of course, by our sponsors, Triad Bank. My guy, Jim Regnan, the CEO out there. Corner Butcher. My guy, Mike Diffley. They have shops in Fenton, Ellisville. They have Chop House in Fenton. Then, of course, St. Louis Equipment. Also, St. Louis Lawn Care. My guy, Tim Jankerson there. If you like the show, support all of the sponsors of the program. Hey, while well, I got you also, let's give a shout out to the members. I did my members video earlier, my premium members video. If you're a premium member on the channel, you get the special monthly video. And hey, you don't have to be, but if you want to be, it's cool. I don't really advertise it much, but we have a couple premium members, my guy, Ken Phelan, Ken, what a feeling, and also G2Z, my two premium members. So thank you very much, Ken and G. Got a couple medium members, a new guy. We have uh, Brian Canfield, the second, thank you, our medium member. We have our guy, Mother Goose. He's been around for a long time. Mother Goose, been a member for 13 months. Medium member, appreciate that, guys. And you know what? Let's just read them all. Going back to the OGs, the beginning, the first guys in the member program, Bren Gillespie, SMFR, the podcast, my guy, Stevie M.F. Reeb. Thank you. Michael Hawkins, Charles Wagner, Bobby, the handsome guy, Johnson. All right. John Helmick, Sam I.M., Adam Nelson, Bird Chatter Baseball, 
and Krabby Joe. Thank you to all the members out there. You got the basics, you got the medium, you got the premium. It's all good. I appreciate all of you. But you guys watching, you don't have to be a member. The videos are free. You just got to watch a couple of ads. That's what we do here on YouTube. Thank you very much, guys. Baseball talk with the war. Throw in who you think is going to be the Cardinals' most valuable player in 2024. You know, and as we as we finish, what do you guys think of those championship football games yesterday? Patrick Mahomes, how is this dude ever an underdog? Best player, best quarterback probably ever to do it. I'm willing to say that. Most talented. He may not end up with the most rings like Tom Brady, but Patrick Mahomes can do things that no quarterback in the history of the NFL, including Tom Brady, could do. He's that talented. I do kind of feel bad for Lamar Jackson. I would have liked to see him. You know, one of these years, I think he's going to advance. And then, man, 49ers, I think it's fair to say, best or better overall team than the Lions. But as somebody who grew up in Toledo, Ohio, one hour from Detroit, watching a bunch of Lions games as a kid, wasn't a huge fan necessarily, but watching Barry Sanders electrify the NFL, the Wayne Fonts years, they were always like 10 and 6. Never did anything in the playoffs. When I'm watching that game yesterday, and I have so many friends who are Lions fans, they're all excited. I got to cover the Lions almost every home game in 2006, 2007 when I was working in Lansing. One of those years was pretty good. John Kitna, you had the Mike Martz offense. I believe they went 7 and 9. Kitna had big numbers. The, the other year was horrible. This was Rod Marinelli, the Rod Marinelli years. I think he was fired in that second year. Don't quote me on that. I don't have the best memory. But, uh, man, in my lifetime, I never even considered the Detroit Lions going to a Super Bowl as even a possibility. So when you're watching that game at halftime and you're thinking, dude, the Lions have a 17-point lead, the Detroit Lions could be in the freaking Super Bowl. That's something I've never even considered in my life. And I'm 41 years old. And then they just freaking shite the bed in the second half, but also give credit to the 49ers. They played well, but drop passes, bad decisions for the Lions. They just kind of run, ran out of gas, huge home field advantage up there and not San Francisco, Santa Clara, which is about an hour away. I've never been to that stadium. It looks awesome. I went to a couple games, covered the Rams back in the day at uh, old candlestick, which I liked. I like kind of the old dumps. I don't know why. They're historic to me. So there you go. A little bit of football at the end. What do you guys think? Let me know who's going to win the Super Bowl. You got to roll with the Chiefs, especially as underdogs. I'm sorry. I'll never again bet against Pat Mahomes in the playoffs. Regular season different. I remember I took the Eagles last year. Were the Eagles getting three, three and a half points? Stupid bet. Oh, that was a close game. But uh, I don't think I'm betting against Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs anymore. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share the show. Shout out to all the members. Once again, I let you know. Shout out to the sponsors, Triad Bank, Corner Butcher, St. Louis Lawn Care, St. Louis Equipment. Thanks, guys. I'm going to try to jump on and do more videos, but man, we need spring training to get here. Ain't a lot to talk about. Let's be real. Ain't a lot to talk about until spring training starts. I'm trying my best, but I like to be honest with you guys. I'm running out of freaking ideas. We've talked about it all every day. We need some games. Even if it's dudes on the backfields, Grapefruit League, pitchers and catchers reporting, we need something. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Have a great week. See ya.